So thanks, uh, thanks for the introduction, and uh, I think that it's uh, actually what Giovanni just presen presented is a, um, is a really perfect lead-in to, to what I'm going to be talking to you about. We are a technology vendor. We do, uh, we do have a, a little piece of software that, uh, that, of course, I'll mention a little bit later on. But what I really want to talk to you today about is the way in which we're observing changes in which large organizations are organizing themselves around data. The way in which they're getting data to be a central part of their decision-making process, the way in which they're bringing together their various technology systems, because you know, with all the great logos we see here, uh, between Teradata or uh, HP with Vertica, Cloudera, Hortonworks, um, you know, there's a lot of capability which is already in place within the enterprise environment today, but in some cases, it's not yet delivering on the the expected value, and what we're observing in the market is that. The challenge is not so much that the base technology layer. In some cases, you know, we, you know, there's some organizations that still have a little ways to go in terms of maturity. But in many cases, it's more of an organizational challenge. It's more of an organizational challenge about how do we think about the way that we're doing this work? Who are we bringing together in the same room, be it a physical room or a, or a, a virtual room, to actually produce uh, new, new insights that are going to drive value for the, for the business? At Dataiku, uh, my role is uh, uh, one of managing the, uh, the teams uh, in the, the EMEA region for, uh, for partner development and for, uh, for direct sales. Um, so in terms of credibility, what, why am I the one up here speaking to you about it? Because one of the best parts of my position is that I do get to go on site with some of the largest organizations in the world to talk to them about the challenges that they're, they're facing, um, of course seeing if there's a way in which uh, our solution has some portion of that answer to it. Um, but the most rewarding uh, part of that role for me is getting in there and, and just understanding what the, those challenges are. So my presentation, I'm going to cover some of these organizational challenges. I'm also going to cover some of the, uh, the initial trends that, uh, that we're observing, uh, which you know, is probably not going to be news to anyone in this room. Uh, but I want you to, to, to think about it in the way that we're thinking about the problem. Um, I'll also then touch on uh, what we're doing concretely as a solution to, uh, to some of those problems. Again, not proposing that this is a magic solution. I'm not going to use any terms about uh, magic or robots or uh, uh, anything like that. It's, uh, uh, we'll get to that later on, but uh, I'm looking to keep this very, uh, very down to earth. Um, so of course, the, you know, the initial uh, uh, observation that uh, any one of us can make is of course that volumes, a variety of data is exploding. As I mentioned before, it's also you know, storage, data storage paradigms, computational paradigms, that's all becoming increasingly diverse as well, such that organizations now have combinations of, uh, uh, of different architectures, hesitation about where we are today, where we're going to be going in the future, is everything going to remain relational or MPP, how do we get the data lake to work with the, uh, the, histori the historical a data warehouse, and so on. There's a challenge then for organizations to, to keep up with the, uh, the, the challenge, um, to, to keep up with the speed of innovation that's coming. Um, you know, every six months, actually maybe even three months, there's, uh, there's something new. Uh, you know, a year ago or a little bit, uh, you know, maybe 18 months ago, everything was uh, with Spark. Um, today, what we're hearing a lot about is, of course, streaming, uh, just in terms of the, you know, the actual data processing and collection side of things, let alone then the analytical approaches that you might see with, uh, you know, which may have been traditional uh, modeling methods regressions and so on, then we got into a random forest, now we're into XG boost. Uh, obviously, everyone's very interested in neural networks and what that can provide as well. So how can an organization you know, thrive in this environment? The context is, uh, is one of, uh, of scaling in many respects, um, because there's this difference in the way in which the data and the potential is scaling. You have, of course, the, the exponential scaling of the, the data and the environment and the value that could be derived from that. But if organizations maintain traditional methods for, for developing new analytics, for developing new insights, for developing new data products, typically that's going to scale linearly. And so we have this increasing gap between potential value versus actual value realized. So how do we, how do we draw that, uh, that dotted line? How do we draw this? How do we ensure that the, the, that the insights being generated are matching and tracking with the, um, the actual potential in the data? Of course, one of the ways in which, uh, which this is being uh, addressed is through data democratization. It's a big theme that, uh, that many people are talking about, of course. That ultimately, data is going to need to become a bigger part of everyone's job. Uh, so it's not just the data scientist, it's not just the data engineer, it's not even just the data analyst, the profiles with data actually in the title, but it's also then for, for the marketer. It's also then for the, uh, for the financial controller. How is data going to inform what they're doing? How are they going to get the most out of their data and how are they going to do that in a way which is going to be scalable at, 
the enterprise scale, how are they going to be able to do that in a way which is collaborative so that they can work with their colleagues across different, uh, across different business lines, but also across different profiles as well. And so what we see is that there's a need to, to align the actual organization around the data. And there's a couple of different ways that, uh, that we think about this. One of those is to, to orchestrate the teams, to bring the teams together, you know, so that you're bringing together the engineering team and the business team, so that you're bringing together the coders and the clickers. Today, there's a lot of different tools out there that are appealing to a lot of different populations, which is in some ways great. There's huge amounts of specialization, really a lot of best of breed capabilities for, uh, for different users. But how do you get those different populations to then work together? I don't know if you, you, know, if you have intensive Tableau users and you have intensive uh, Jupyter Notebook users, this is great, but how do we get them working together in a, a way to talk about, well, okay, what you prototype in Jupyter, I need to visualize in Tableau, and how are we going to do that in a way which is going to be repeatable and manageable at scale? This manageability uh, in governance is, of course, a huge concern as well, uh, because again, if we're just building up a lot of notebooks, we're passing around a lot of, uh, uh, of I don't know, Scala uh, objects or Java objects or whatever it is, how do we ensure that this is going to be governable? I was at a, a, a large bank uh, last week in, uh, in Switzerland, and they were asking, you know, how do we build a, a system that if you know, downstream, way downstream, in a Tableau dashboard somewhere, we find that there's data that should not have been there. Um, how do we track back in an effective way where that data came from, how that ended up there, and correct the problem? How do we do this in a way which is not, while well, also enabling agility and actually ensuring that we can, uh, we can produce those new insights in Tableau or whatever the, uh, the final consumption point may be? How do we do that in such a way that's going to be uh, uh, agile as well? So those are some of the common concerns. There's also then the, uh, the, the need to to level up some of the, uh, the individuals within an organization. This might be taking uh, you know, analysts who are proficient in SQL and getting them into some programming languages, maybe making their first steps in R or Python. New techniques, so uh, maybe a business user who's pretty familiar with the idea of you know, regression or some of the uh, traditional statistical approaches for analyzing data. How can they get into machine learning for the first time? And then for the, uh, you know, the more engineering uh, folks on the team, how do we ensure that they have an appropriate business mindset for, uh, for what they're doing? How do we ensure that they're able to understand what's actually needed from the products that they're producing? And then finally, how do we take the best of the open source world? And we see a, 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 a situation in a, lot of our, in a lot of our customers where they have you know, maybe a traditional analytical stack, um, you know, very rigid, very, uh, uh, very solid, very, you know, it's been there for 20 years, it's written in three letters, First and the last one are the same one. Um, you know, and that works well for certain use cases, but you know, there's all this great, uh, great progress being made in the, the open source environment. How do we integrate that into, uh, into what we're doing in a way which is going to be manageable, though, uh, and in a way which is then going to be accessible? Because we can't you know, train all you know, 200 of our actuaries in Python. You know, this, is, uh, this is great. Some of them are following some of, those, uh, some of the training, some of the professional training that we're doing. But you know, realistically, we're not going to get there, and certainly not in the next 18 months. So how do we ensure that that can be open and innovative and agile while also manageable? So what we do is we've developed a product. We're a, a software development company. Um, the product is called uh, .iq DSS. And what it does is it brings together your data, brings together your technology, and importantly, brings together your people around the common challenges. So in the old days, right, you know, before the, uh, the data big bang, you know, we started seeing uh, new capabilities, again, these best of breed solutions coming out to allow you to do data preparation. That's great. You know, so now we can do best of breed data wrangling. Um, and so you can really finally fly through the, uh, uh, the data preparation steps. That's really powerful and super valuable. Um, then you know, some dedicated solutions for, for machine learning. You know, come, come to us with, a, you know, with your CSV file that you want to do some, uh, some learning on. Drop it in our system, and it's going to do some magic. You know, it's going to it's going to send its robots a, a after it. It's going to you know do the hyperparameterization. And it's going to be awesome, and you're going to get new results out. Okay, that's cool. That's a, that's a really nifty product as well. Um, notebooks for uh, uh, for rapid prototyping of new uh, new capabilities. ETL to pipe it around. Old solutions, new solutions, also very powerful and also very necessary. And then of course data visualization, so you can actually see what you're working on. Then of course these were you know so you can think about this as sort of a, you know different steps in the uh, in a typical pipeline. Then of course you had solutions which were appealing to to a data miner or to a business analyst or maybe to a data scientist to individual profiles going end to end. At DataIQ, what we're doing in the product side is providing a platform that covers both you know the horizontal access 
of an entire end-to-end -end solution going from data connection, ETL steps, preparation steps, machine learning, visualization, as well as in a vertical access, access or usability and acceptability to a wide range of profiles as well. So bringing together the data, the data scientist, the data engineer, the data analyst on projects that run end to end. So how do we do that? Well, again, it's not magic. We have just what we think is a pretty well-designed tool to, uh, to enable this. But again, the main challenge is an organizational one. Specifically, though, briefly on the product, we're going to cover data preparation by giving you a visual interface to, uh, to quickly process your data, understand what is the data quality, do that uh, directly in the interface from wherever the data is coming from. So again, this notion of an abstraction layer on top of, on top of uh, Hadoop, on top of your MVP databases, wherever the data may be. Machine learning built into it. So again, we're not, we're not algorithm builders. That's not, our, uh, that's not our added value. And what we're seeing within the organizations is that you know, it's not in fine tuning the most you know, sophisticated model that they're going to derive the most uh, uh, business or the most business value. It's in terms of being able to apply for the very first time some more sophisticated uh, uh, modeling approaches to their data. So 90% you know, of the value is getting them out of linear regression and into their first random forest. Um, then, of course, tweaking that or moving over to XGBoost or whatever it is, that's going to be interesting as well. But for a lot of the organizations, and so even for some of our largest clients, the main value that they're seeing is for the first time getting the different data sources together and for the first time applying the very first machine learning algorithms to this in a way which it can actually be reproducible and manageable. Of course, for the, uh, the data scientists, for the data engineer profiles, we're going to provide them with their tools that they're familiar with. So if they want to code in Scala, Python, R, what else, SQL, PySpark, Spark R, Hive, Impala, Pig, uh, even shell recipe if they need to connect with other systems, they're going to find that exactly here in a way that's going to execute exactly in the same way that it would if they were submitting it via the command line. Um, so both in terms of static code, what we see here is a recipe, but also in terms of notebooks, Jupyter is built in. Visualization, so that uh, even if they are working with, uh, with Tableau, with Click, uh, with other solutions for, uh, for visualization, don't necessarily need to jump to a, to a different solution to get a, a view on your data. But most importantly, the, the final output is going to be a workflow. And so ultimately, with our you know, data scientist users, we've seen them prototyping new capabilities the old-fashioned way, so just with a bunch of uh, notebooks, typically. And when they need to go and present this to their business consumers, they end up drawing something that looks like this. So we're providing this in this uh, manageable infrastructure that can then allow for all of these teams to come together, to work together, such that data science, advanced analytics, becomes the next intellectual property asset for the company. Importantly, um, one of the main considerations is that something like 86% of projects never make it out of the prototyping phase. Uh, this is a survey that we ran among our, uh, among our users. With the old way of working, they would stick in the prototyping phase. You would get great insights. You know, business users would say, you know, that's fantastic. I know that this is possible now. But what do we, uh, you know, how do we actually productionalize this? DataIQ is going to, uh, to cover that as well, allowing you to deploy your workflows into an automation node and into a scoring node as well, so you can do real-time predictions without having to do the, the software development yourself. We're going to leverage the infrastructure that you already have, so push the computation, uh, computation to where the data is. I've never used the word ingestion in this presentation, except for there in the negative sense, um, because we don't pull the data anywhere. Data stays where it is. Our solution is installed on your, software, or on your servers, in your environment, so that you don't have to worry about privacy, and so you can lever the, leverage the full compute uh, capacity of your Teradata, of HP Vertica, of Cloudera, of Hortonworks. And so ultimately, what we're doing is aligning the way in which data science is done at scale and by whom. So we're covering the full li life cycle, natively leveraging the, uh, the best of the open source community, doing it in a central location in a way which is accessible for clickers and for coders. I was having lunch with our, uh, uh, with our largest client earlier this week, and they said that, you know, it's great that .iq, it, it accelerates the way in which we're doing certain tasks. The work of any, any one individual is easier and faster. That's wonderful. And you know, there's some ways in which we're able to then do things technically that we weren't able to do before. But the real value, the real value that, you know, that attracted the attention of, uh, of top-level management were the new insights that were being generated. And the reason for which they, were, they hadn't been done before was because they'd never gotten the same people across these different profiles in the same room working on the same problems. And so by getting those people together, using a tool, 
in, you know, as it happens to be our tool, we're very proud of that. Uh, they've been able to do that in a way which is, you know, not magic. It's not some uh, uh, some some new capability or some new uh, new algorithm that we're providing. But we're providing them with uh, a well-designed tool so that they, the engineers, the data scientists, can do, do their job better. We're very proud of, of course, the uh, the work that we've done with uh, with our clients so far. Uh, we're happy that they're happy with us. Um, we're very happy that Gartner has taken uh, notice of us as well, Forrester too, um, hashtag humble brag. Um, but what we're most proud of is the customer success stories, um, where we, we see organizations that are developing entirely new capabilities, uh, mobile apps for, uh, for parking with a predictive component built in, enabling you know, more than 500 brands to, uh, to set up an entire data as a service platform uh, to enable hundreds of data analysts who had never before worked on top of Hadoop to get out of PowerPoint and to get out of Excel and start working directly on the, uh, on the data. You know, realigning entire marketing uh, approaches so that, uh, so that ultimately they can, uh, they can do more and powerful things on top of that data. So I think you know, the, the last words that I want to, that I want to say, you know, it's, you know, the technology is necessary. Um, Giovanni from Ikea, he, he hit the nail on the head, right? You know, there's all this great technology out there. Uh, and it's absolutely necessary. Uh, you, you can't do the computation without it. Um, but it's not sufficient. What's necessary, you know, what, what's required in addition to that technology is the organizational approach, which is going to bring together different groups, different skill sets, so that together they can start prototyping new, new capabilities. And then importantly, getting those capabilities out of the prototype phase and into the production environment. And so th this is, of course, what we're, what we're building our company to, uh, uh, to enable. Um, we've had a certain uh, uh, amount of success so far. Um, you know, just in terms of uh, company background, we've been around for about four years now. We've got uh, our version four of the product out now. And we're eager now to, uh, to, take this and, uh, to take this further so that ultimately our customers can go further with their own da data, with their own people, building that knowledge, capitalizing on that knowledge, internalizing that knowledge and those capabilities so that they're not depending on you know, dedicated locked-in solutions, so that they're not depending on uh, external resources for, that, uh, uh, for those new business values that they're developing. So this way, data science, advanced analytics becomes a central intellectual property asset for your companies in a way which is going to be manageable and scalable.